in the late 19th century, an aviation incident shook the entire U.S. The U.S. government spent millions of dollars searching for a female pilot named Amelia Earhart. Not only is she known as a courageous woman, always fighting for equal rights of men and women, she is also known as a legendary female pilot flying alone across the Atlantic. To this day, her mysterious disappearance and ill, fated flight remain a mystery to the history of aviation. In today's video, we learn together about Amelia Earhart, the legendary female pilot, and the mysterious disappearance of America. Role Models for Academic Endeavors Amelia Earhart was born on July 24, 1897 to a well-off family in Atchison, Kansas, USA. From an early age, Earhart was a girl who showed courage, had the will to progress and loved adventure, no less than men. Unlike other girls her age, Amelia enjoyed the games of boys like climbing trees, hunting rats with rifles, cutting short hair, and wearing boy clothes. In a time when male and female disrespect was still popular, she rose to serve as a shining example for her persistent learning efforts. Not only good at sports and mastery of physical activities, Earhart also excelled in learning while simultaneously attending six high schools and graduating on time. This is something that only very few people do right now. In 1914, when the family went down, Earhart moved with his relatives in Chicago, Illinois, USA. Now, with a high school diploma, the young girl started looking for a job to support herself and help her family. Earhart was interested in jobs that were often considered not for women at the time, such as lawyers, mechanical engineers, or director. Earhart was not only good at natural subjects in high school, before coming to the passion of the queen in the sky, Earhart used to be an editor in the world, famous magazine Cosmopolitan. After witnessing wounded soldiers returning during World War I, she decided to study to become a nurse, take care of sick and sick soldiers at Spadina Military Hospital in Toronto, Canada. Passion for the Iron Birds As an adventurous person but Amelia Earhart has never embraced the dream of flying in the sky. It was not until December 28, 1920, that a beautiful day, a young girl, Amelia Earhart, was led by her father to a flight school in Long Beach, California, where she met Frank Hawks, who would later become an airplane racer. Popular. Earhart's father paid $10 for his daughter to enjoy a 10-minute flight at a height of 300 feet, approximately 90 meters. It was the first time she experienced the feeling of freedom flying in the sky. It was that flight that helped find the greatest passion of Amelia's life. She is determined to become a pilot attached to life with giant iron birds. But pursuing passion is not so easy. Her tuition to become a pilot was a luxury to her economic potential at the time. To have enough money to make his dream come true, Earhart has to do many jobs, from taking photos to driving trucks. In the end, the young lady saved $1,000 to attend a pilot training course at Kinner Field in Long Beach from January 1921. During the school day, she had to take the bus to the end of the day and go six kilometers more to reach the school, ready to do all the odd jobs to follow the teacher to guide after school learning. Male trainees from the same school, prospective male pilots who had originally started out as well, off economists, despised a female student like her. They considered it a fool and did not know how to measure their own strength. In spite of the insults, Amelia Earhart's extraordinary effort made amazing things. Just a year later, Earhart saved the money to buy a Canary Airster biplane and named it the Canary. On October 22, 1922, 
she took her aircraft to a height of 14,000 feet, equivalent to 4,300 meters, setting the first record of her life, and this is also a world record for female pilots when there. Nearly a year later, on May 15, 1923, Earhart became the 16th woman to be granted a pilot's license by Federation Aeronautique Internationale, FAI. Earhart made her first official flight at Denison Airport in 1927. She also became a sales representative for the aircraft manufacturer Kinner in the Boston area. First President of 1909s. The role of women in American society at that time had changed greatly. And what Amelia Earhart shows makes the whole world feel like they have touched the concerns of the time. They understand that a woman should find her passion, pursue a career, and make a lot of money like Earhart, not just a housewife. In 1929, two years after the United States officially licensed the pilots, the whole country has more than 9,098 people licensed to fly. But of that, only 117 women were allowed to call in the name of the female pilot. Many comments reserved, objected and said that women should not fly at all. Or restricting women to short flights is less risky, especially for airplane races, that restrict women's participation. A pioneer in opposing contemporary ideas, Amelia Earhart, along with five other women, formed a club for female pilots, the forerunner of 99s. Two years later, Amelia was elected president of the club, becoming an inspirational speaker for girls with a passion for the sky, calling for equality between men and women. 99s is an international organization of female pilots promoting the advancement of aviation through the scholarship program and mutual support. It is not uncommon to want women in the aviation industry to be considered equal, rather than something rare and valuable, rather than overly feminine. They want women to become ordinary male pilots. The first woman to fly across the Atlantic. After pilot Charles Lindbergh's first transatlantic solo flight in 1927, the United States was interested in finding a female pilot to repeat this. After many choices, in April 1928, Amelia received a special phone call that would completely change her career later. Captain Hilton H. Rayleigh called Amelia and asked, Do you want to fly across the Atlantic? Immediately, Amelia answered yes. In 1928, Amelia's flight consisted of two passengers, pilot Wilmer Stoltz and mechanic Lewis Gordon. The team left Rakassi, Newfoundland, on an F-7B Fokker on June 17, 1928, and landed at Buryport, Wales, UK, after 20 hours and 40 minutes of flight. She went on to set the record as the first woman to fly across the Atlantic although only as a passenger helping the crew record the flight's journey. After the plane landed, Earhart said, she felt like a luggage and she harbored her determination to someday cross the sea on her own. You are watching videos on LMT News. Do not forget to visit the new channel of the Royal Family Video Group. And the details please see below the comment section. Journey across the Atlantic Ocean, really. During the period from 1928 to 1930, Earhart was an editor for the aviation section of the famous fashion magazine Cosmopolitan. As a writer, she also excelled when she published many articles and several books that drew attention to her pilot experience. In the late 1930s, with her popularity, Amelia Earhart was invited to speak in many places to promote the role of women in the new era. Her reputation led Purdue University to sponsor her to build a private jet for her to continue her exploration work. In 1931, she decided to marry George P. Putnam. 
who admired talent and spent a lot of time and effort to pursue her. He owns a publishing house and is also an avid aviation enthusiast. In keeping with her love of liberty before her wedding, in a letter to her spouse, Amelia Earhart made a covenant that they would not be allowed to interfere with each other's wishes. She said that if within one year, one of the two felt that they did not fit together, they would ask for a divorce. On the morning of May 30, 1932, at the age of 34, Amelia officially made the journey to conquer the Atlantic at Harbor Grace Airport, Newfoundland, Canada. She took off on a Vega Lockheed single engine, five flights aircraft, with a local newspaper to confirm the departure date. During 14 hours and 56 minutes of flying, Amelia had to cope with strong winds from the north, ice and mechanical problems with the aircraft. Overcoming challenges, she landed on a meadow at Culmore, north of Derry, Northern Ireland. As a result of this trip, she was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross of the United States, Distinguished Flying Cross. President Herbert Hoover also praised Earhart as a pioneer woman, an example for all generations of Americans to study and admire for their determination of determination, strong character and willingness to cooperate. The brave female pilot continued to reap new successes, and she was awarded many medals and medals for individual flying achievements. On January 11, 1935, Earhart became the first person to successfully make a solo flight from Hawaii to North America and won the $10,000 prize. Target Fly Around the World and Mysterious Disappearance Amelia continued to set a more daring goal than flying around the world. She outlined her idea, whereby Amelia would fly along the equator with a distance of up to 47,000 kilometers. Her ideas immediately gained attention, and the Purdue Foundation agreed to sponsor the journey. In July 1936, the aircraft named Lockheed Electra 10E was built by Lockheed Company with specifications to ensure the long journey of the female pilot. She invited three people to join the plan, Harry Manning, the captain who served President Roosevelt, Albert Paul Mann's famous pilot in aircraft races, and finally navigator Fred Noonan, who has a lot of experience flying at sea. According to the original plan, the journey around the world will include flights from Oakland, California, flying west to Honolulu, Hawaii, and then through Australia, Asia, Africa, Florida, USA, and finally back to California. Everything started smoothly when Earhart and his three companions finished 16 hours of flight, landed at Wheeler Airport on Oahu Island, Hawaii, on March 18, 1937. But the Electra then went into trouble, forcing Earhart had to send the plane to Florida for repairs. During this time, she decided not to give up, and Putnam Security Fund sponsored the second trip. Nearly three months later, Earhart reinstated the flight plan. She decided to change the flight this time in the opposite direction. On June 1, 1937, she and Noonan Navigator left Miami and flew east. Through many stops, they reached the city of LA of Papua New Guinea. After this 21 pass more than 35,400 kilometers flight route, the place is also the place to record the glorious footsteps of the greatest woman in aviation history, who is only 11,200 kilometers from the Victory Platform. However, 11,200 kilometers was the most dangerous challenge when they had to fly over the Pacific. No one expected the flight took off on July 2, 1937 from the city of LA to the small island Howland in the Pacific is the last journey of a legendary female pilot. U.S. Navy ship USCGI Tasca, assigned to liaise and guide EMEA, has lost contact with the crew from Nukumanu, according to the Atchison Daily Globe on that fateful day. 
having to cross the 4,100 kilometers long road. Your heart and Newton had to dismantle many communication and navigation devices on the plane to make room for more fuel. The aircraft finally signaled at 8.45 a.m. in the position supposedly about 160 kilometers from the destination. The whole country was shocked, and the authorities launched a plan to search for the plane with the famous female pilot and companion. The U.S. Navy and Coast Guard were mobilized on the largest search in American history at the time. Lexington aircraft carrier, Colorado warship, Japanese oceanographic survey ship and Kamoi seaplanes searched in 150,000 square miles, 390,000 square kilometers. During the next two weeks, the U.S. Navy scanned a vast area of nearly 650,000 square kilometers, but did not find any clues. Every attempt at communication and search became hopeless on July 19, 1937, the United States ended a search campaign costing $4 million. After more than a year and a half of investigation, on January 5, 1939, the U.S. court officially declared Earhart and Newton dead without finding the body. Theories about the fate of the female pilot Because the official investigation did not find the cause of her mysterious disappearance, and the pilots accompanied, there have been many rumors and hypotheses in the public opinion to explain the incident. According to some researchers, they may have been taken captive by the Japanese on Sapin Island until their death. Wally Earhart, Earhart's cousin, believed that the Electra had crashed into the Pacific but two people on the plane were saved by a Japanese fishing boat. Both were then taken to Sapin Island, Mr. Noonan was killed, and M.S. Earhart died from illness here. According to M.R. Wally, the U.S. government concealed the case because Earhart was a spy for Japanese military bases in the Pacific for President Franklin Roosevelt's administration. In the book, Amelia Earhart, Beyond the Grave, Researcher W.C. Jameson mentioned the possibility. Earhart was returned to the United States by Japan in 1945, and she continued to live until 1982 under the new name Irene Craigmile Bolum. In 2018, expert Rick Gillespie, part of the U.S.-based International Historical Plane Discovery Group, IGHE, also drew attention when it published research on emergency calls for Lockheed Electra aircraft, and a set of bones were found on the beach on the island of Nikomaro in Turbabe country in 1940. The Lesby and Colleen said that Earhart had to spend the last days of her life stuck on the island after the plane crashed. However, the government rejected the theory after a doctor concluded that the bones obtained were male due to their size larger than average. All the published theories and evidence are inconclusive, making the pilot's disappearance to this day still one of the greatest mysteries of all time. Despite the tragic outcome, your heart is still a female pilot widely known and considered a symbol of independence, perseverance, and courage. Thanks for watching the video on LMT News. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and watch more new videos to support the group.